Okay, I think we're good to go. Okay, can I just check everyone can hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Broadland District Council Planning Committee on Wednesday, the 4th of November, 2020, our virtual meeting. Thank you to all officers who enable these virtual planning meetings to progress. Hopefully everything will run smoothly, but please be patient if we should find a few gremlins in the works. We will endeavor to resolve any problems as quickly as possible. Our meeting today will be recorded and the meeting will be live streamed to public viewing on YouTube. The recording of this meeting will also be available on the Broadland District Council website. You should be aware any comments made in this meeting will be recorded indefinitely. Please can I ask everyone to, in attendance to ensure when your microphones are unmuted that you should try to keep the background noise to a minimum. Background noise can be very distracting from the discussion and information being relayed throughout the meeting. My name is Councillor Sue Lorne. I'm Chairman of the Planning Committee. I will now ask our committee officer to proceed to a roll call for the other members of the Planning Committee. Thank you, Officer Atherton. Thank you. Councillor Adams? Here. Councillor Beadle? Yeah. Councillor Brennan? Yeah, present. Councillor Folger? Present. Councillor Creamy Gouvenlou? Present. Councillor Lorne? Present. Councillor Moncur? Yeah. Councillor Prutton? Present. Councillor Riley? Present. <clears throat> and Councillor Ward? Present. And we've received apologies from Councillor Fisher with Councillor Brennan as his substitute. Thank you very much. I also have with me officers from uh, our planning department and we have Tracy Lincoln, who is our development manager for Broadland and South Norfolk District Councils. We have Officer Matthew Rook, central area team manager for Broadland and South Norfolk and our presenting officer today. We have Tracy Bradley, who, was Demo who is Democratic Services who will be host for our trace for our meeting today. And we have Officer Lee Arthurton from Dem Democratic Services who will take and prepare minutes of our meeting today. Thank you. <laughs> All members of the committee will receive in advance, paper, have received in advance paper copies of the agenda, presentation slides and public written submission for the applications we will be considering today. At various points throughout the meeting, for example, in relation to questions and comments, I will do a roll, roll call member to member in alphabetical order, requesting the member's input if necessary. Today, I am pleased to confirm we will have public speakers for this planning meeting. Only members of the public who have registered in accordance with the council scheme of public speaking will be able to address this committee. The time allocated is a maximum of five minutes per speaker per parish council. Please be aware there is no provision for members of the public to circulate documents or photographs at this meeting. The order of our meeting today will be as follows. The planning officer will present the key points for the application to the committee for consideration. This will be followed by questions to the presenting officer from the members of the committee in relation to the presentation. Public speakers will then be invited to address the committee. Now, this again will be followed by questions to the public speakers from members of the committee. And I must emphasize these questions will only be to clarify something the speaker has said and not for the speaker to put further points across. The order of public speaking is parish town council first, followed by objectors and finally supporters, i.e. the applicant or agent. Council members who are not members of this committee will then be invited to speak for allocated time of a maximum of five minutes for each speaker. This again will be followed by questions from members of the committee. The committee will then discuss and determine the application with a proposer and seconder for each of the applications we will consider today. Members will give their vote to the proposal by roll call and our committee officer will relay the results of the votes to the meeting. Do we have any questions before we proceed? No, thank you. We will now move on to our. Just, sorry, uh, sorry. Uh, so I was trying to. Uh, sorry, ask question. I wasn't fast enough on the mute. Um, sorry, um, it's, it's uh, 
Uh, Helen Mellors, um, she's not present today. Is she on holiday or? No, I think Tracy will confirm. I think that she's got another meeting to prepare for this morning. So Tracy, you're on mute. Sorry, same problem with mute. Um, Helen Mellers and I are sharing responsibility for the development um, for the, for the planning committees. Um, so we will will mix and match that, obviously in, in conjunction with conversations with Sue Law. So it is the intention that you would be um, attending um, in place of Helen now on a permanent basis. No, so Helen and I will share those. So you won't you, see, you won't see both of us. You'll see one of us, and we will um, okay. take different committees um, depending okay. on um, obviously what else we've got on and, and what's on the agenda. So we will be sharing the responsibility for that. Uh, we just hadn't been informed about that. That's all. Okay. I can confirm that Helen is, has got another meeting before this meeting would finish this morning. Okay. Okay. Is, is that okay, Councillor Riley? Yeah, it's just that we hadn't been informed that from now on the the meetings will be we always had, as you know, the um head of planning who was still attending the meetings, then we went over to directorship, the AD was to attend the meetings, uh, because the AD is in charge of the planning overall in terms of that being the AD. And I just thought that if we're now getting into administration change where that's being shared uh with a non-AD uh, assistant AD then I would have thought the planning committee should have been informed about that, Helen, um, Sue. Okay. Okay, if we can take that up separately outside of the yes, meeting. Yes, and I can, I, I can only apologise that we, we haven't made that more uh, formal for you, but we will discuss it, as um, Officer Lincoln has said, um, at the end of the meeting, if that's okay with you. Okay, thank you. We will now move on to our agenda. And at this point of our virtual meeting, I'd like to bring items one, three, and four together, please. Agenda item number one is to receive declarations of interest under procedural rule number eight. Agenda item number three to confirm the minutes of the previous meetings. And agenda item not number four, any matters arising there from. Officer Alfreton has just got uh, to advise us of um, some um, changes to the minutes for the, or some alterations to the minutes of the meeting. So um, Officer Alfreton, if you could just explain the amendments that we have to make. Yep, and, thank you. Uh, then if you can then go to the roll call for those three agenda items, please. Yes. So um, in terms of the amendments to the minutes, we've got three amendments today. So page five of the agenda, minute 127, under the declaration of interest, the application number should read 20200981 for the wall garden application. And then on page 10 of the agenda, at the bottom of the walled garden application, minute number 131, the application number should be then read as well, 20200981. And then finally, there's an additional extra minute needing adding into the minutes to confirm the minutes of the last two meetings held there. But other than that, they're the only amendments. Okay, so if I do the roll call now, if then can you confirm, obviously, if you have any declaration of interest and you're happy with the minutes, with those amendments. Councillor Adams? Yeah, no declaration of interest and uh, happy uh, with the minutes as amended, Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Beadle? No declarations of interest. Uh, agree with the minutes and I don't think I've got any masses arising either. Councillor Brennan? Uh, no declarations of interest to approve the minutes with the amendments and no matters arising. Councillor Folger? No declarations of interest uh, and uh, happy with the amended minutes. Thank you. Councillor Creamy Gouvenlou? Hi, uh, with respect to the second application, I am a member of Tavon Parish Council, but I had no part in the discussions on this application. And minutes, I approve the minutes with the amendments, uh, no matters arising. Thank you. Um, Councillor Moncur. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, Councillor Lawn. Happy, um, no declarations of interest. Happy with the amendments to the minutes and agree those and no matters arising. Thank you. Councillor Moncur. Uh, no declarations of interest and happy with the amended minutes. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Pratton. No, declar uh, no declaration of interest, but an additional amendment to the minutes, and it's also in paragraph 127. I'm down as a, a member with an interest uh, on the walled garden at, at Coltishall. 
I have no interest there at all. I don't know how that came to be registered. So please delete it. OK, thank you. Thank you. Um, Councillor Riley. Uh, yes, agree the uh, minutes and the amendments. Um, no declaration of in, uh, interest or matters arising. And Councillor Ward. No declarations of interest and agree the amended minutes. Thank you. That's completed. OK, thank you very much, Officer Arthurton. And if we could just please go to um, item number two, officially for the apologies and, um, and the um, absence, please. Um, so we have apologies from Councillor Fisher with Councillor Brennan as substitute. Lovely, thank you very much. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, that takes us to our first application today. Application number 02019-1881, Drayton Drury, change of use from Woodland. And um, Tracy, if I could just ask you, please confirm that we have the members of the public in relation to this application, please. The Councillor Everett and Councillor Crotch. Yes, okay? I guess, yeah, yeah. They're, they're all in. Okay, thank you. And uh, I'll just read the public information. I'll explain the process of our meeting that will follow. This presentation will be presented by Officer Rook. Our officer will be sharing the screen throughout the presentations. Members will also have this presentation information via hard copies. Committee members, please ensure that you do not leave your screen at any time during the presentation public speaking or discussion of an application. If you should need to leave for any reason, please give the reason for leaving to the host through the chat. And you will need to understand that you could then be in a situation where you are unable to vote on the application under discussion at the time of your absence. Please be advised if a member should lose connection for a period of time, the meeting will be adjourned until the member reconnects. Please note a member will be given a period of five minutes to reconnect before the meeting will resume. And if the member has not re reconnected in the time scale allowed, he or she will not have a vote on the application under consideration at the time of losing connection. Members, can I advise you that on conclusion of the presentation, I will ask for a roll call if necessary, if you have any questions in relation to this presentation. Could I please request if you should have any further questions or comments after I've asked you in roll call, would you please address these questions through chat and our host would bring it to my attention. We will now proceed to the presentation. Thank you, Officer Rook. Good morning, everybody. Can you hear me okay? Yes, thank you. Yes, yeah. Okay, I'll just put my screen on. Let me just have a quick look, find that for you. Oh. Everybody see that okay? Yes, thank yes. you. Okay, first application, as uh, Chairman said, Drayton Drury, NDR Reefham Road, Junction Drayton. This is a full plan and application for the change of use of a woodland for use as an organised paintball in site with the erection of ancillary structures. This is in an area of woodland of six hectares. Let me get a plan up on the screen, just give you the context of the site first of all. Uh, the application site is just north of the Broadland Northway, the A1270, which runs through your screen here. And at this point, there's a roundabout with the Reefham Road. The Reefham Road connects from Thorpe Marriott Housing Estate, further off in the reef in direction and Fellthorpe in this position here. So the application site, just see it on that screen there, is a small little um, arm coming off the roundabout, which then serves a small car park, which we've got some details of. It just shows you the context of the site relative to the, the main uh, settlements in the area, Horsford, Drayton and Taverham. Going to the next slide, starts to bring the application site into context, outlined in red here. So you can see the area of woodland, this area of Drayton Drury here, which is primarily the area that is going to be the proposed to be the paintballing zones. So we have a number of gaming zones in that woodland. But then also we can just see coming off of the roundabout is the area of car parking and connecting to the car parking to the woodland is just a, 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 a walkway, a, a, actually a public right of way, which exists to allow that connection from the car park to the, to the woodland itself. The other thing just to show on this plan is the overall context of the site, the relationship or the proximity of the site to the Thorpe Marriott housing estate 
um, and the areas of um, agricultural land in the in the surrounding area around the site and further woodland of the Drayton Drury and Howan Plantation further to the north of the site. Going a little bit closer, you can get start to see the, the slip road or the uh, arm coming off the roundabout. This area here is the existing car park, an area of um, sort of unmade, it's not formalized with tarmac or anything like that, but it is this area here that's been utilized and that is currently used for uh, people walking and enjoying the sort of the rights of way that exists through Drayton Drury and Howan Plantation. People park in there and then walk through and then there's a series network of footpaths, public rights of way around the Drayton Drury. Which are then shown with these hatch lines here. So you can see the um, restricted byways and public footpaths that exist uh, within that um, within the woodland and running through the front of the application site itself. This plan has been submitted by the applicant, it identifies the area of car parking, um, which I've shown you on, on that other slide. I'll do some photographs of that shortly, which I can show you. And then once people park in this area, they then walk along the footpath into this first part of the application site, which is the sort of the main uh, customer area. So people will come into this area here, register for their uh, paintballing sessions, pick up their guns, pick up the equipment that they need. And then once they've been collected by the members of staff, be then taken into the gaming zones, which are then located within the woodland itself. So this is the main sort of hub for customers. They'll return here to pick up more sort of uh, supplies, um, shelters in this area here. So if the weather turns inclement, they can shelter in that area. There's a toilet and a storage containers. I've got more details of that in a moment. It just shows you the, the area, the context of that customer area relative to the car park and relative to the, the wider red line of the application site within the woodland and the gaming zones. A little bit more detail on that car park area. Currently, there's just a, a single line of cars that, that, that park. The spaces aren't demarcated. Cars just park in the available space. And then currently, people are, are parking in there then going off to walk into the woodlands. The 40 parking spaces have, have been identified as, as by the applicants as, as necessary for the level of um, customers and staff that they are anticipating would be um, arrive as part of the gaming uh, paintballing sessions. This then is a plan again produced by the applicant to identify the customer area. So Footpath would be down this area here, the existing footpath connecting back from the car park. Customers would then come into this area here within this sort of compound area. There's a reception area here where they'll be uh, sort of booked in, uh, pick up any kind of supplies for the, the, the gaming that they'll be undertaking. Sh series of shelters, U-shaped buildings around this area here. So we've got four uh, customer shelters here which are timber frame buildings, um, clad in plywood, and then got a sort of corrugated metal roof to each of those, quite simple sort of structures. Another two shelters over here. Toilet block in that position, and a secure storage facility, which is a, a metal container, which we'll use for overnight sort of storage, secure storage of supplies and um, equipment associated with the, the paintball in activity. Another area here, which again is provided by sort of the timber frame structures, corrugated roof. This is where the, uh, so the, the gaming um, customers will pick up their guns and store their guns while, while not in use. Little demonstration area here. So then they'll be collected by a member of staff and then taken off into the gaming zones where they'll be undertaking the paintball in um, sort of activities themselves. That gives you an idea of the arrangement of the um, customer area with an area of staff facilities, just obviously a covered area for staff when, when um, the customer, when the, when the paintballers are either, um, you know, having lunch or, or, or taking a break, they're in an area here themselves. 
some fairly um, straightforward plans of the, of the structures themselves. As I said, mainly, or oh, they are timber framed, clad in uh, plywood, uh, very sort of straightforward sort of buildings themselves. Certainly no brick and tile or anything like that. They're all very, um, uh, as I said, timber clad with the, the ply sheets just to form a, an enclosure and provide some shelter to, to customers as they come into the, um, into the paintballing area. Some images just to show the, the sort of thing. These are the customer shelters that I was talking about. So sort of U-shaped bench supported by clad in on the rear, open to the sides and a corrugated tin roof. And there'll be, as I said, six of those in total. They're the game in gun racks. Again, arranged in a block of six, corrugated roof. So this is the front elevation with little shelves in here for the guns just to stand on while not in use. Um, examples of the secure storage facility. So that would be the equipment store locked up for equipment overnight. And then the toilet block, obviously for use for customers um, during their visit to the site. Photographs of the site. So this is uh, with a roundabout just to the right hand side of the photographer here. You can see the Broadland Northway as it curves round and, and, and reaches the roundabout. This is the little arm that comes off of the roundabout, connecting into the existing car parking area. Uh, and this is the area that the applicants propose to, to utilize for uh, their paintballing customers. It's already in use for people walking. You can see a couple of people here gone off for the, the parked up on the site and taking the dog for a walk. And um, that happens very frequently on the site. Um, and again, just gives you an evidence that it's not actually a formalized um, hard surface, just sort of cars park up on this available area and leave the car there and go for a walk in the woods. That's how that's happening at the moment. And, and that will continue as part of these proposals alongside the additional proposals for parking associated with paintballing customers. So then take you from the car park, there's a footpath that runs down the side of this field here. Uh, I've got another slide off there, better slide, but then shows the car park area here. So customers from the paintball site will park up in this area, walk down the footpath, and then enter the, the customer area, which is estimated about this position here. Take on the next slide. Comes into view a little bit better there. So the customer area is about this area here, just behind these frontage trees. Another view of that. So this is a view looking just across the corner of this field. Application site is that boundary running there. So we'll have the customer area in here where we can see the, the toilet block container set behind that. This will all be enclosed. The proposal is to enclose all the site boundaries with three meter high green netting. So that will be evident on this particular uh, view of the application site. There you go. Um, so we're on the footpath. Looking back across the front of the application site, so we're saying that the customer area will be in this part. Have we lost Matthew or is it just my computer? I believe he's frozen. We've, I, I've got nothing from him. Okay, we'll give him a couple of minutes to vote to get back. Matthew? I think we've lost him from the Zoom call, Chairman. Okay. Here, we'll give him a couple of seconds, a couple of minutes to get back on again. While you're on the line, Sue, we can hear you beautifully now. That's lovely, thank you. I don't know what happened, it just, um, it's just the gremlins, but we'll get rid of them. <laughs> as soon as Matthew gets himself back again. <laughs> If I can just explain to members of the public who are waiting for Matthew to join in, he will have been kicked out completely out of uh, Zoom. So he has to log back in to um, with his password and bits and pieces. So that'll take a few minutes and uh, then to get himself set back up again. 
So please just bear with us. Any sign of him, Tracy, of trying to log on? Uh, yeah, I think he's just about here. Okay, thank you. Matthew, we lost you. I'm back. Sorry You're about back. that. What happened there? <laughs> <laughs> it's those gremlins. But, um, I hope How far did we get? <laughs> we'll go back to the screen. Um... It was the public footpath part that helps. Uh, let's have a look. Yeah, keep, um, keep going. Go about there, did we? I don't know. So I was we explaining that about that. Do you see that one? Yeah, that one. Yeah. Yeah. Talked about that's the three cool. meter boundary on that position yeah. there. Yeah. Yes. Then going through the slides, this area here is the footpath that continues into the woodland. Customer area would be in this part of the site here. And then the paintball gamers would then continue off into the woodland to take up their game in that position. Another view just of that area there, looking back to the footpath with the footpath continuing through Drayton Drury into the woodland. Then some just general context views within the woodland itself. So these are the general sort of gaming zones would be taking place within between the trees, part of the you know, the, the, the gaming experience is the cover that the trees give. So, so there's no intention to remove the trees. The games would take place between the trees. And then that was the final slide just to um, bring that back. Is that okay? Yes, lovely, thank you. Fine, so that's, yeah. And so far as the report itself, the application is brought to committee for determination um, as the proposal will generate employment, but the recommendation is for refusal. The proposed parking area, as I said, is already in use as a car park in association with the surrounding woodland known as Drayton Drury and Howen Plantation, where a network of footpaths allow public access and public rights of way. It should be noted that the car park is not within the ownership of the applicant or the owner of the woodland, identity identified as the application site, as it's believed to be highways land. Proposed ancillary structures are timber framed, clad in plywood with corrugated metal roofs set around the customer area, comprising a reception, a shop, staff area, customer shelters, and a block of gun racks. There is also proposed to be a large storage, um, secure storage container and a portable toilet block. The toilet block's not proposed to be connected to any sort of a mains um, sewer, the proposal is from the applicant that they will remove the waste once a week. The entire site boundary will be marked with three meter high green netting and the customer area is to be provided with electricity powered by a generator. External lighting will be used in the customer area when required, usually at the end of the session in the darker months. There'll be no lighting of the gaming zones within the woodland. The proposed hours of use are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., seven days a week, including bank holidays, although the finish time will be earlier during the darker winter months. The applicant anticipates that most bookings will be at the weekend with approximately 50 customers each day with one member of staff per, uh, per customer. Uh, one member of staff, sorry, per 10 customers. There will be corporate bookings available during the week when approximately 30 customers are anticipated at each session. The proposals will employ two full-time members of staff and up to 20 part-time jobs. The use will operate on a pre-booked basis only. 
In planning policy terms, the site is outside of your settlement limit and is in a countryside location. It has not been allocated for any purpose and there is a large county wildlife site within the woodland to the north. In addition to the comments which are set out in section four of your report, an additional objection has been received from the Drayton Drury Relief in Need charity, who are the trustees of the surrounding woodland. Their objection is summarized in the supplementary schedule on page 40 of your final agenda. Going to the, the, the assessment itself now, para 5.1 of the report sets out the key considerations to be assessed in the determination of this application and section, section five of the report assesses each one of these. In terms of the principle of development, as stated, the site is outside the settlement limit, but a paintball in use is considered to be a recreational use, which can be considered to be an additional community facility, which policy CSU1 of the DMDPD states, proposals which improve the range of community facilities and local services available within the district will be encouraged where no significant adverse impact would arise. Such proposals may be permitted outside settlement limits where it has been adequately demonstrated that a clearly defined need exists. In this case, the applicant has stated that the proposal has been submitted due to a relocation from Racecourse Plantation in Thorpe St Andrew, but has not provided further evidence that a clearly defined need exists. Furthermore, to comply with policy CSU1, no significant adverse impacts must arise as a result of the proposals. The report uh, looks at different aspects of the, of the development insofar as the character and appearance of the area, residential amenity, ecology and highway safety. Um, and it's considered that by virtue of the proposed activities associated with the use, along with the appearance of the ancillary structures, the storage container, the external lighting and the three meter high boundary netting, together with the associated paraphernalia that the proposals will have, that there would, would be an adverse visual impact on the site and the rural character and appearance of the area. Concerns have been expressed by the County Ecologist and Norfolk Wildlife Trust that the external lighting will have an unacceptable impact on bats and other nocturnal species. The Highway Authority have objected to the parking proposals, which are not within the control of the applicant, and will very likely create conflict at times when both the paintballing and it's when the paintballing use is taking place and people are using the car park to um, exercise in the woods. This is uh, likely to push car parking onto the surrounding highway network and the highway authority require that an area of land amounting to 40 spaces needs to be provided within the applicant's own land. In addition, the County Council's right-of-way officer has objected due to lack of information about the effect of these proposals on the existing public rights-of-way and on people safely using them. Therefore, it is considered that there are significant adverse impacts as a result of these proposals, which outweigh the job creation and recreational aspects that the proposal would create. In conclusion, it is considered that the proposal does not accord with policy CSU1 of the DMDPD for the reasons explained and will result in adverse impacts on the character and appearance of the area, on ecology and biodiversity, on highway safety and public safety associated with the existing public rights of way. The proposal therefore is considered to be contrary to the development plan, including the Drayton neighborhood plan and the recommendation is to refuse the plan and application for the reasons set out on pages 28 to 29 of your report. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you. So we go back to full screen, please. Um, let me see how I do that. Okay, yep. thank you. Okay, members, do you have any questions in, for the officer in relation to the presentation, please? Officer, uh, Councillor Pritton? <clears throat> Excuse me, yes, please, Matthew. Have you got any photographs there? of the footpath area that that you can point to me and and show me where this purpose-built slip road and the additional parking is going to be have you got anything that sort of shows me where it is not where the additional parking is going because there isn't any um the parking area is is the existing parking area let me see if i can just 
but on the, on the on the on the the, the plan that the proposer has yes. given to you i mean there's a there's a bit up on the right hand side that says additional parking oh i see um, what you mean okay that's these areas here so they're just talking about trying to get some cars in this sort of verge area oh, so that you goodness. can still continue so yeah it's not going beyond these fence fences here no. All they're talking about is cars being parked alongside the edge of the I'm footpath. With I'm with you. So they're just taking up the grass verge as to Yes. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. We're trying to get more cars in there. And that's yeah. why the rights of way officer is concerned about traffic coming into these areas and the conflict that would have with public yeah. using the rights of way. OK, thank you for the clarification, Matthew. Thank you, Chairman. That's all. Thank you. And if I could just go back to full screen, please. Can you do that, Lee? I'm not allowed to do that. Okay, lovely, thank you. Any further questions for the officer before yep. we go to public thank speaking? You. No? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew, for that presentation. And we will now move on to our public speakers. And I um, have, um, Tracy, can you please unmute Councillor Everett, please? And if I can just um, explain to the committee that um, Councillor Everett had a, a few issues with his uh, connection um, um, a few days ago. And um, if we can just please be understanding that if the connection should fail again, we will wait for um, Councillor Everett to come back and, and join us. Okay, so Councillor Everett, if I could please uh, just explain to you, thank you for attending this morning, and just explain that this morning you will have five minutes to address the committee. And unfortunately, we don't have a prompt that we can share on the screen with you. Um, because that would block you from our uh, committee members. We are in the process of trying to resolve this issue, but it's, it's, um, it's um, just taking a little bit longer. However, the host of the meeting will advise you when you have one minute remaining. Is that acceptable to you? Yes. Okay, thank you. Councillor, but you can please introduce yourself to the committee and you will have five minutes starting from now. Okay, thank you, Chairman, and good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Graham Everett and I'm Chairman of Drayton Parish Council. The Parish Council objects to this application for many of the same reasons as shown in the officer's recommendation for full refusal. You will have seen the Parish Council's environmental and ecology concerns should this application be approved, so I will not repeat them now. Instead, I will focus on access and location issues. Drayton Drury is situated at the northwest corner in the parish is adjoining the parish of Horsford to the east and Felthorpe to the west, with all three parishes interconnected by many walkways. Very, very importantly, directly to the north of the Drury, is a new woodland park recently purchased by Broadland District Council and again interconnected by numerous and wonderful walkways. In time, this area will become an outstanding country park. In Councillor Sean Vincent, the leader of this council statement, he says, it's the perfect location to expand our green infrastructure, but it's much more than that. It's about people having access to the countryside. It is where we are protecting the existing, and I'll repeat, existing environment. As these wonderful woodlands are so closely interconnected, Drayton Parish Council is keen to work with Broadland on opportunities to further enhance these areas, as both councils share the same environmental and green infrastructure vision. However, Owing to the remoteness of Drayton Drury and the lack of public transport, these areas can only be accessed by private vehicles. Therefore, the need to retain the existing public car park for walkers is critical. Now, I can confirm I've had discussion to County Council and answers to Council Pratton's questions. That whole area is owned by County Council. All that footpath is there. It is a highways land, and I can confirm that. If I may share with you a little bit of the history of this area. Prior to construction of the NDR, now broad and northway, the Drury could only be accessed by a very narrow track directly off the Reefham Road, with no proper parking available. Therefore, this area, sadly, was unknown to many people. The Drayton Parish Council had always had a desire for a car park for that area, and this was included in our neighbourhood plan. The current Drury car park was used as a storage area for construction of the western section of the NDR. And Drayton Parish Council to work very, very closely with the NDR team to see if this site could ultimately be turned into a public car park following completion of the work. The County Council very kindly agreed to this request 
still fulfil in one of the county council, uh, and, no, sorry, Drayton Parish Council's neighbourhood ambitions. So then, for that, I can confirm it's fully owned by county council. Broad and Northway opened three years ago this month, and the Drury has become a very popular location since then for walkers, especially with families on the provision of the car park. In the first lockdown earlier this year, combined with the beautiful weather, even more people discovered this area and the car park was almost at capacity every day. Amazingly, even with the less favourable recent weather, the area is still extremely busy. Should this application be approved with the proposed numbers of attendees and vehicles, especially at weekends for the paintball sessions, as indicated, the opportunity for parking for members of the public to walk will be very, very limited, as there's no alternative parking at all. It's broad the Northway or Reefham Road, and you could not park on either. In summary, Drayton Parish Council objects to this application. The officer's recommendation is for full refusal. So I respectfully urge members to support the officer's recommendation to refuse this application for the reasons as shown. I wish to thank you for your time to listen to me. Thank you very much. Members, do you have any questions for the public speaker? And can I just remind you, it is just purely to clarify anything the public speaker has said and not for the public speaker to put any further points across. Is there any questions for Councillor Everett? No? Okay, thank you very much for your time this morning and um, it's very much appreciated. Okay, we will now move on to our second, second public speaker and I've got Councillor Crotch and if, uh, Tracy, if you could just unmute him, please. Okay, thank you Councillor Crotch for attending the meeting this morning. I'll just repeat everything that I said to Councillor Everett you will have five minutes to address the committee. We don't have a clock that we can show, unfortunately, but if it's okay, the um, officer will advise you whenever you have one minute remaining. Thank you. Okay, thank you. And you can please introduce yourself to the committee and you will have five minutes starting from now. Fantastic, thank you, Madam Chairman. Um, yeah, Adrian Crotch, uh, the ward member for Drayton North. And uh, yeah, thank you for the opportunity to speak to you today where I'm gonna uh, suggest that the committee support the officer's recommendation to refuse this application. And whilst I speak as the ward member for Drayton North, the residents of Drayton, Tabram and Horsford are all beneficiaries of this beautiful and peaceful areas to enjoy woodland walks. This lovely area complements both the parish council and Broadland's desire to support healthy living, walking and outdoor spaces, and Drayton Drury very much contributes to these objectives. I do appreciate that the application is looking to support outdoor activities and to generate some additional employment. And whilst employment opportunities are especially welcome at this time in the economic cycle, it does not on this occasion outweigh the benefits of the well-being benefits the current woodland area provides. We've also heard how the car parking is inadequate. Uh, as has already been heard, this area is extremely popular uh, and the car park is regularly busy. So I think this in itself doesn't make the proposal attractive. The provision of the 40 spaces given the existing usage would appear inadequate as has been highlighted. Highways don't support on this basis. There's no provision for additional parking on the Broadland Northway or the Reefham Road. And indeed the applicant doesn't um, own this land to be able to make further changes. The wildlife and nearby horses would also be affected by this interruption to their habitat. And I'd urge the committee to take this into effect. Uh, the new Hound Park plantation also adds to the expanding green infrastructure that Broadland and Drayton councils are promoting in the surrounding area. So in summary, uh, I think the application doesn't support the environmental character of the area, the noise pollution, the impact on wildlife and diversity, the lack of car parking and the associated highway safety means that I'd like to see the committee endorse the refusal of this application. Thank you, Chairman. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Riley, are you still with us? Councillor Riley. Okay, I think we might have lost Councillor Riley, so we'll just. Hello, hello. hello Councillor hello. Riley, could you just turn your video back on, please? Uh, hold on a minute. So I'm having a I'm having a broadband width here. I'm still with the meeting, but to okay. maintain it, I'm having to switch off the video. Okay, that's that's fine. Thank you. Very I'm much. still here. <laughs> that's good. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, and um, thank you for that, uh, Councillor Crutch. That's really much appreciated. And um, members of the committee, do you have any questions for Councillor Karach, just in relation to the what he said and, and nothing to put forward? Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much. 
Thank you for your time this morning, public speakers. It's very much appreciated. We will now, as a committee, go into full discussion. And Tracy, if I could please ask you to unmute the committee so that we can have a full discussion. And um, if anybody has anything that they'd like to say, if you'd like to raise a hand, put a request through um, the chat. Um, and we will have um, Officer Lincoln and Officer Rook if you need any further information. Uh, Chair? Riley. Yes, um, I don't actually have any further um, questions on this, but I would like to support the officer's uh, recommendation here. And, and I think that um, the councillors and particularly Graham Everett has uh, shown some experience here from being a previous planning member. Hello, Graham. Um, <laughs> actually laid this out really clearly under the policy as well. The harm does outweigh the benefit. And I think that's been adequately demonstrated within uh, the officer's recommendations here. So I, I would move we, we oppose, uh, we support the officer's recommendation and do not support the application, Chair. I second that. Yeah, I'll second that as well. Okay. That's lovely. <laughs> We're all second. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Councillor Adams. Okay, uh, any members that need to say anything further in relation to the application? Councillor And yeah. Councillor Ward, sorry, as well. Apologies, Councillor Ward. Um, yeah, so I, yeah, I just wanted clarification first from the officer. When it says 50 people a day, does that mean 50 all at once or does that mean 50 during the course of the day? The information I've got is that people are there for the whole day. So there won't be a case of you have 20 in the morning and 30 in the evening. It would, or, you know, it'd be a case okay. that they are there. Once they arrive, they're there all day. Thank you. I'll just say something else while I'm on. Uh, I do know the operation, and, and these are the same people that operated the one at Thorpe, and that, that was operated very well, actually, and uh, I've heard of no complaints ar around that area. But uh, in, in this case, I, my whole objection rests on, on that parking, which I think is completely inadequate. So I would be supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Beadle? Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Uh, yes, uh, can I say I often uh, go by this site in my travels indeed. Earlier today I went by the site and there were actually six vehicles in the car park this morning before nine o'clock. So it, it is extremely well, uh, well used. I've never seen that car park without a private car in it during the daylight hours. And uh, it is extremely well used, as indeed the photographs indicated, uh, showing that the parking area is in need of repair already. And it's not been open that many years and the footpath is very well used. Um, it, as as uh, has previously been said, uh, it forms part of an extensive network of footpaths between Horsford, Felthorpe and uh, Taverham and Drayton. And uh, you can actually pass across the North uh, the NDR in two places uh, by foot without actually uh, uh, having to cross the dual carriageway, literally. So, so it is a, a, a very well used area for recreation and it is actually part of uh, an extensive part of woodland with uh, well, lots of wildlife in there and uh, different uh, fauna and flora. So uh, I'll be opposing uh, this application and supporting the officer's recommendation. Thank you, Chair. Okay, thank you very much. Any further comments from any members of the yeah, committee? Councillor Brennan, sorry, Councillor Butcher, I'll come to you in just a second. Councillor Brennan? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, just uh, do we know why uh, this organisation will not be operating from Thorpe anymore? I mean, has it actually closed down? And then in line with that, why are they advertising on their website already that they have, are moving to this new site? I know that's uh, been put in already as one of the objections on the paper. Um, yeah. And also, I find it rather duplicitous that it says that people would have to travel to Setford if they don't have this site, because there's no accessible paintball site within the Norwich area, which is totally untrue because there's one uh, Ringland uh, Bedlam paintball. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was gonna mention the Ringland one, so I'm pleased you, you, you're aware of that. Um, I can't comment in relation to the information they put on their website. You know, we've got no control over that. That's their, that's their choice. Um, I'm, I'm not, I haven't had a lot of information in relation to the reasons why they're coming off. There could be other 
um, land ownership, the current landowner may be wanting to, um, you know, have a, have a, have a change of, of uh, operator or a change of change of um, use on the land. We haven't had any other applications. So on that basis, I think it's just a case that they are, that it's a, an agreement between the, the landowner and these operators that has, has come to an end and they're looking for another site. We don't have the applicant here today to, to, to provide further information on that. I can only go on the information that's been submitted as the plan and application, and there's limited information about that side of things, I have to say. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Matthew. Councillor Fortra. Uh, thank, you, thank you, Chairman. Uh, yeah, I'm very happy to support the officer's recommendation because I think uh, the proposal is extremely um, detrimental to the amenities of the area, inclu including the wildlife. And it's uh, a very much appreciated uh, for walking in a very pleasant environment. And I think uh, uh, this should be uh, maintained and therefore I would uh, unreservedly uh, support the officer's recommendation. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any further comments? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, um, ladies and gentlemen, we will move to our vote. And um, Casey, just confirm that you don't have anything that I need to, nobody's got anything to your attention for me to address before we go to the vote. Um, no, there's nothing more. Okay, thank you very much. You. Okay, it's been proposed by Councillor Wiley and seconded by Councillor Adams that we as a committee should agree with the officer's re recommendation to refuse this application for the reasons as stated in page 28 and 29 of your papers. Officer Upperton, could you please proceed to the roll call for the vote? Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Agree with the officer's recommendation. Councillor Beadle. Agree. <coughs> Agreed. Councillor Brennan. Yeah. Agree. Councillor Folger. Agreed. Councillor Creamy Givenloo. Agree. Councillor Lorne? Agree. Councillor Monker? Four. Sorry, can you repeat that? I didn't quite hear it. Four. Thank you. Councillor Prutton? Agree. Councillor Riley? Four. And Councillor Ward? Four. I think that's unanimous for refusal. Okay, thank you very much. Yes, so that has been refused. Thank you for your time, everybody involved in, in presenting that today. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, we will just have a quick five minute break, if that's okay. And we will reconvene at, I don't know, we will reconvene at um, 28, 10, 28, please, if you can all do that. If you could turn your videos off and your sound off for the, the few minutes, please. Thank you, bye everyone. Thank you.
Lee, can I just confirm that you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. It's a lot better. I didn't want to. I just suddenly thought, oh, I've turned it off and I won't get back on again. But we have, so that's, that's, that's good. Did you do anything specific when you went offline to improve your sound? No, no. I think what my problem is, I normally have my iPad sitting next to me in case I need it for the, in the minutes or anything like that. And um, I think my iPad, my yeah, my iPad interferes with my laptop. I took uh, that away, and I seem to be able to speak again. So, oh, well, fair enough. Speaking, it's not very often that I put it up there, but I just wanted it beside me today, just for the supplementary um yeah but um oh well yeah, so, so oh well that's good because really nice, normally you're you're normally yeah. you're nice and clear and no problems yeah. so, so. okay thank you all right thank you <laughs> oh, dear. I, think that, I think we've got the committee all back with us now so if we can just confirm that we have the uh, uh, members of the public who would like to, be, like to speak in relation to application number two. Yes, we do. Thank you. Two, sorry. Application, sorry. Application number two, 2020, 12, 12. So Mar Maragowan, 10 Pengrove, Tabram. And I've got Mark Thornhill. Mr. Thornhill, would you like to turn your video on, please? Peter Eldon and Wayne Hoban. Yeah, that's you, Dad. Well, I've got to speak. Yeah, you can speak. Yeah. Hello. And Peter Eldon, just say Peter Eldon. Peter Eldon. Hi, thank you. Okay, and Peter, is your is your speaker on? I can't. Yeah, your, your iPad's off, that's okay. Okay, lovely. Thank you very much. When it comes to your turn to speak, then we'll ask um, Tracy or Leah to unmute you, if that's okay. Okay, thank you very much. We will uh, now move to Officer Rook, if you could please do the presentation. Okay, item number two. This is at Maragowan, 10 Pen Road, Tavram. This is a householder application proposing to raise the roof level with a loft conversion, including dormer windows, single storey extensions to the rear and extension to the front. If we just uh, go through the slides. This, first of all, the star identifies the property. Penn Road is running north south on your slide there. This property is on a corner plot of Penn Road and Walters Road. Walters Road runs that way. You just you can see predominantly residential area, semi on detached properties, primarily single story properties. This is the detail of the application itself, its um, site itself. The red line identifies the extent of the application site, and this identifies the current arrangement for number 10. So you've got the main property here with a projecting single story element towards Penn Road. Property then has a garage, single garage at this point, and a little connecting sort of um, porch way. The existing plan then does show another structure to the rear here. Um, the site does have access, vehicular access, both from Walters Road in about that position and Penn Road in this position here. The other thing this plan doesn't show is there's a little uh, workshop building on the boundary with number eight. Uh, which is in about this position here. 
So that's an overhead photograph of the site. So you can see that arrangement I just mentioned with the projecting single story element to the, to the front of the property. This is number eight, Penn Road, neighboring property. And then you've got neighboring properties opposite. And you can see the access point that I mentioned and the garage and the workshop on the boundary in those positions there. Number two is the neighboring property on that side, number two, Walters Road, which has got its driveway and garage in that point. And Penn Road has got its driveway uh, and um, structures to the rear, a shed and, and, and possibly a garage at that position there. This is the proposed block plan. So this identifies the uh, elements of the proposal. So you remember we had the, the single story element projecting to the front. It's proposed to infill that in that corner there to raise the roof of the bungalow to form a chalet form of accommodation with roof lights. So we've got um, two dormer windows, sorry, two um, pitch roof dormer windows on the roof slope fronting Walters Road, a flat roof dormer faced him towards number eight. The workshop building is then connected. Currently it's detached, is proposed to then be connected to the main accommodation with a single story extension to the rear, which is formed here. This now is the, obviously the block plan, but some elevations of, of the proposal. So these are the proposed um, elevations in the top part of your plan here. And then the floor plans, ground floor and first floor plans are shown in this position here. Firstly, to the elevations. This is the front elevation. So this is the front elevation towards Penn Road. I mentioned that there's got a, currently a single story uh, projecting element, which does that currently as proposed to build across the front of the front of the property and to take the height of that up to the uh, new raised ridge height. I think the ridge is going up 1.15 meters above the existing uh, bungalow ridge height. And then the proposal is to provide a doorway. So the front door would be in that position there with a glazed sort of feature glazing around the front door and full height up to the roof. The other thing on this front elevation you can see is the side profile of the flat roof dormer window towards number eight and the side profile of the dormer window towards Walters Road. And then both of those are then shown on these elevations here. So you've got the dormer windows towards Walters Road and then the profile of the single story rear extension. That's got a height of 4.3 meters to the ridge. And that's arranged with these um, double doors and roof lights above to provide a sort of a, 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 um, an area of light coming into the accommodation uh, shown on the floor plan here. And I mentioned about the connection with the, the um, existing workshop. So there's a, an access that can then be created through, provide a sort of a WC and almost a utility room in that part of the floor plan. And then the side elevation towards number eight is shown here so that you've got a flat roof dormer window in this position. And on the floor plan here, we can see, if I zoom in a little bit on those, you can see the rooms that those that dormer window is serving. Go in once more. Got a bedroom, which has got a window to the front, and there's an ensuite for that win for that room. It's shown by this little black mark in here. That's the window to the ensuite. That's the window to another ensuite, which is for this bedroom here. Then we've got two sort of walk-in wardrobes, and they've both been provided with windows. So we've got one, two, three, four windows. And they're the one, two, three, four windows shown on that side elevation. Those are all to be obscure glazed um, as they are serving um, non-habitable rooms. And then this is the um, rear aspect showing the single story element, ridge height of 4.3 meters and the connection of the uh, workshop to the, to the main dwelling. Photographs of the site, let me just zoom that back so we get the full image. So this is the view pretty much from the corner of the property, Penn Road on the right hand side, Walters Road is on this side. And you can see the arrangement as I mentioned with the bungalow as it is with this projecting front extension. Proposal is to infill that, take the ridge up 
So we have a continuous ridge through that part. The single story rear element would be in that part and the pitch roof dormers on this side of the property facing Walters Road. This is then a view from Penn Road, shows the uh, existing single story element and the provision of the, the driveway that exists now between the two properties at numbers 10 and number eight, just on the right hand side of that picture. And that's the arrangement between the neighboring property at number eight and the existing property at number 10. Flat roof dormer would be in this position here. I think what I would like to draw members' attention to is the, the change in the levels. Penn Road level rises from south to north, so the properties further north are on a higher uh, site level, and the ridge height of this property at number eight is much higher than the ridge height of currently, much higher than number 10. Proposal to take that up 1.1 metres, roughly, you know, we're talking about this sort of area here, and therefore... I don't anticipate it be any higher than the neighbouring property at, the, at number eight. Um, and as I said, these windows here for the flat roof dormer window would be obscure glazed. Um, so there'd be no sort of overlooking relationship issues with the neighbouring windows at number eight, as you see it on the, on the slide. Just some other views of the property at number 10, mentioned about their garage. This is the garage element. So that would all be demolished. And then the single storey extension would be in that general position there. Views in the rear garden. Once again, this is the boundary between numbers 10 on this side and number eight on that side. So this is the, the, the workshop building that'll be retained. The rear extension would be over about at this position here, set away from the boundary. So we anticipate given the change in levels that the height of that wouldn't be detrimental to the neighboring property. That's just a view within the garden of number 10, looking back towards the neighbour at number two, Walters Road. Again, you can see, although they've got a conservatory in here and a roof light, the, the, the fence in the existing boundary features tends to conceal most of that property. And views once again on the corner of Penn Road and Walters Road. As I mentioned, the site levels are rising as you run north on Penn Road. So the um, increase in site levels mean that that increase in ridge height wouldn't be as uh, perceptible as it would, would be if it was on a completely flat site. And just a view of Walters Road, again, the context of those properties, property there with a dormer window to the front, obviously number two Walters Road has got a loft conversion, albeit through a, a roof light. And then mentioned um, that a neighbouring property at number two, Penn Road, so that's at the far northern end of Penn Road. This was a bungalow and that's been converted into a chalet and that you can't quite see it, but has got a, a dormer window on that um, elevation front, fronting onto um, Walsenham Road. And that's the final slide back on, um, back on those elevations. Um, Going back to the presentation or the, the, the report, the application is brought before committee for determination at the request of Councillor Kelly. If I just do that, there we go, back in the room. <laughs> uh, the request of Councillor Kelly for the reasons given at para 4.2. The application property is a detached bungalow set on a corner plot at the junction of Penn Road and Walters Road, the property being a single story projection towards Penn Road, which is proposed to be extended uh, across the front and, and build over that to form the new entrance and hallway, which I showed you on the slides. The rear extension would be the full width of the dwelling, but at 4.3 metres high will be lower than the, the proposed main roof. Um, explained about the dormer windows, the application is in its amended form as the height of the rear extension has been reduced. There are no updates to the report, so nothing in the supplementary on this particular item. In turning to the assessment, the proposals, of, uh, the proposals uh, are located within the settlement limit of Taverham, amongst other residential properties, which are predominantly bungalows of various designs and sizes. Some have loft conversions with dormer windows, but principally they are un unaltered single-storey bungalows. 
The other notable feature here, when I've shown you on the slide, on the photographs, is a change in site levels as Walters Road is at a lower level than the application property, which is lower again than the neighbour at number eight as the road level rises to the north. It is considered that the proposal to raise the ridge height by 1.15 metres in a position where the immediate neighbour at number eight is at a higher level than the application property will not have a negative impact on the character and appearance of the area. The proposed chalet style property with its dormer design and front glazing will change the appearance of the property, but not to such an extent that will be detrimental to the locality, especially given that this is a corner plot where the outlook from the property is different given its dual aspect. An example of a similar chalet has been built at the other end of Penn Road at number two, as I showed you the photograph, and that was a bungalow, but that was then changed um, to a chalet. In terms of residential amenity, the proposals retain the existing separation distance to the, to the neighbouring property and provides additional separation between the respective dwellings. The windows of the proposed flat roof dormer on the roof slope towards number eight will be fitted with obscure glass as controlled by planning condition. So there is no loss of privacy. The height of the rear extension has been reduced to 4.3 metres high and this too is positioned away from the boundary. As set out in the report, the permitted development right for rear extensions and outbuildings is four metres in height. So it is considered that at this distance from the boundary with the application site at a lower level than number eight, that the rear extension in its amended form would not have an unacceptable impact on the residential amenities of the neighbouring properties. Concerns were raised by neighbours about the position of the driveways and whether the site could accommodate the parking necessary for construction vehicles and the size of the property proposed. It is considered the position and size of the available parking areas are appropriate. In conclusion, the proposals in their amended form are not considered to be detrimental to the character and appearance of the area or to residential amenities of neighbours. The recommendation therefore is to approve the application subject to the conditions set out on page 37 of your agenda. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Officer. Okay, um, members of the committee, do you have any questions for the Officer in relation to the Presentation Council Award? Yes, thank you. Right. I just wondered if the land falls away on the other side, not towards number eight, the, the other side, and how the ridge height of this property compares to that one on that side. Please. At number two, you mean? Yes, yes. Uh, need to go share screen again and have another look. Bear with me. So that would be that's the view of Walters Road. So I imagine you're talking about this property here. Yes, yes. Um, you can see that can't quite get the picture on there, but that's the ridge height of the existing bungalow. So it will be higher. But what you've got to remember is that this isn't running the full length to the boundary with number two. Let me show you the elevations. Uh, oh, wrong way. That one. So the fullest mm. height is at that point there. It then drops down for this section. Right. And that's the boundary with number two, Walters Road. So it's not that it's going full height all the way towards the boundary. The full height stops almost halfway in the plot. So you then got the lower section, which runs towards Walters Road. You understand? Okay. Yes, thank yeah. you. So yeah. so yeah, you've got that lower section, not, not the higher. That was what was originally proposed. It was originally proposed all the way through there. And we sought to reduce that down. So you've got a lower section nearer to, um, to number two, Walters Road. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Riley? Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, the planning consent for number eight, uh, Pen, uh, Pen Road, um, Matthew, uh, when was that uh, approved? Have a go. Number eight or number two? I mentioned number uh, two. Yeah, I'm getting, I'm getting the, um, you're right, it's number two, sorry. <laughs> it was 2013. And that, and that was determined via uh, officer. Delegated uh, powers, it wasn't called powers. in. Okay. 13, you say? Yes. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Karimi Kuvalu. 
Matthew, I can't see any comment from highways. Presumably they have no objection to the driveway? No, because they're not actually creating anything other than what already exists. They're not providing a new access or anything like that. So no, they haven't embraced any it's adverse it's comments. Access. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay. Okay, thank you. Councillor Brennan? Yeah, thank you, Chair. Uh, Matthew, the, the view of the site from the corner of Penn Road and Walters Road, we've got a photograph. Can you confirm that that shows solar panels on the roof at the moment? Or are they, there's certainly yeah. a, some sort of solar device anyway, whether it be TV or for heating water? Here? Yeah. yeah. Um, if you go on to the next, uh, if you go, go forward a bit, Forward rather than back. Oh, forward. yeah, I'll get my yeah, arrows sorry. wrong way around. Sorry. <laughs> bit more, bit more, bit more. Yes. There. Yeah, yeah, solar panels. They're solar panels. So, uh, from a, a green issue, I can't see any indication on the planning application that we've got in front of us that those are going to be, shall we say, replaced or moved to no, some other location. That's yeah, that's true. Um, the plans. So that surely is a retrograde step rather than a positive step. Yeah, you're right. And on that basis, the roof, yeah, because that roof is now going to have dormer windows mm. on, on, on both sides and roof lights on this side. The only available roof would be there, but that's north facing. North facing, yeah. So, so it will be so efficient. We do have the applicant on as, as due to speak, so that may be something you can speak to him about. But yes, you're right. Okay. Those, those solar yeah. panels are not shown as part of these proposals. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, uh, go back to full screen, please. Okay, thank yep. you. Any further questions from members of the committee for the officer? Okay. Okay, thank you. We will now move to public speaking. And if I could just um, confirm that, um, Tracy, if you could please unmute Mr. Thornhill. Morning. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Thornhill. Um, if I could just explain to you that um, thank you for attending, attending this morning and giving us your time. You will have five minutes to address the committee. And unfortunately, we don't have a comp that we can show you that timing. But one of our, um, our hosts would be able to advise you whenever you have one minute remaining. Is that acceptable to you? That's fine. Thank you very okay, much indeed. You. If you could please just introduce yourself to the committee and you will have five minutes starting from now. Thank you. Um, my name's Mark Thornhill. I've lived in Taverham for 13 years. Um, I live in the property directly opposite uh, the planning application, so I actually live at 13 Penn Road. Um, firstly, can I just turn around and say that I'm not against anyone improving their property. Um, very pro, to be honest, at the end of the day, but um, I've lived here for 13 years. Um, Waters and Penn Road and predominantly a lot of Taverham um, have bungalows. Um, the improvements on the bungalows have been dormers. They've had uh, roof extensions, but that's actually been in the roof. So number two, Pen Road, can I just turn around and say that is offset from the road, whereas this planning application is further projected towards the road. Um, so I think it's going to be totally out of character with um, the area. Um, there's other things as well um, that I think with the, um, the way that the dormer extension is going to be and the front that's going to be facing us and the level of uh, extension of, of glass that's going to be in the property, there's going to be a lot of light impact regarding, um, not being funny, but the sunshine on everybody's um, windows. And at night when you're driving up Penn Road, because it's such a height, um, the headlights from properties are going to just hit that and it's going to be blinding, to be honest. Um, Penn Road, uh, the properties and the bungalows on Walters predominantly have bedrooms facing the front of the roads. So therefore, <coughs> what, what's going to happen is all of our properties, we're going to have an overview and privacy issues with this because the, the windows and the doors that are going to be extended on the property and front facing and the side, they're going to be out of view into our properties, which is a problem. Um, I think I'm also concerned about the level of traffic. Penn Road and Waters Road have double parking on a constant basis. 
we've had emergency vehicles try and get down those roads and have problems in the past. And we've got at the moment, we've got some building work that's going on on other properties. And I'm just concerned that once this takes place, because of the size of the proposal that's going to take place, how these vehicles are going to get up and down the roads. We've got to get out of, out of our properties. So how is this going to work? Where are they going to park? And how are they going to get down the road? So that's some of the issues that I've got. Um, access to the driveways from our point of view, noise and vibration. Um, the idea that it had one existing access parkway in the first place what I couldn't understand was why it required a second driveway. And if you have a look at the plans, you've got a double garage there. Um, if there's, as, I, as far as I'm concerned, there's only going to be two people living there. Um, I just can't understand why there's going to be a need for a double garage and two driveways. It, it, it just seems excessive from my point of view, to be honest, at the end of the day. Um, Lastly, if the plan is accepted and the proposal goes forward, um, are there going to be any restrictions because of the size, again, of this proposal? Um, are there going to be any restrictions on the times and um, obviously dates, etc., cetera, when um, the, the proposer is actually going to be allowed to do this? So are we talking nine till five or is it going to be seven days a week? Um, basically, because I've got two disabled daughters, they actually, they've, the bedrooms are at the front of the property. One's got autism, another has got Crohn's disease, and they need to be able to sleep. So that's my concern. Um, concluding, I'd minute, just like... You have one sorry, minute remaining. Thank you. <laughs> concluding, um, I'd just like to turn around and say we're not unreasonable neighbours. Um, we welcome new people into the neighbourhood. It's just the simple fact that we would like... Um, a development that is in keeping with the existing properties. So thank you very much for your time and for, for listening to me. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Thornhill. And members of the committee, do you have any questions in relation to the public speaker? No? OK, thank you very much for your time, Mr Thornhill. We thank will you. now move on to our second speaker this morning, and it's Mr Peter Alden. And uh, Tracy, if you could please unmute Mr Alden. And uh, Mr. Alden, we can see you now. So if I can please just explain that you will have five minutes to address the committee. And when you have when you have one minute left remaining, the officer will advise you of this. Is that okay with you? Yeah. Yes. Okay, that's lovely. If you could please introduce yourself and you have five minutes starting from now. Uh, Peter Alden of Eight Penn Road. The main objection I have for this planned extension of 10 Penn Road is the 12 metre long dormer, which will block the outlook from my lounge and kitchen windows. For 34 years, we have appreciated views over the Wensum Valley, but the, these will be lost due to new lounge and utility room. The overall look of these extensions are definitely not in keeping with the surrounding properties. I've got something now. Yeah, well you just say I've finished now, Dad. I've finished, yes. Yeah, okay. Thanks You're finished. Thank okay. You. Okay, that's lovely. Thank you very much for taking the time to, to be with us this morning. Uh, members of the committee, do you have any questions for our public speaker? No? Thank you very much, Mr. Alden, for attending. And uh, we will now move on to our third public speaker. OK? If you'd just like to just... Um, that's fine. You, you, you can stay on video if you wanted to, but uh, it's fine. You just needed to mute your sound. OK, we will move on to the third and final public speaker this morning, and it's Mr. Wayne Hoven. Uh, Tracy, could you unmute Mr. Hoban, please? Oh, I can't see. Thank you. He's un unmuted. Okay, Mr. Oh, oh, sorry, apologies, Mr. Hoban. If I could just please uh, explain that we, you have five minutes to address the committee, and we will advise you when you have one minute remaining. Is that acceptable to you? I can't hear you. Did you? 
you're not muted, but I can't hear what you're saying. No, I still can't hear you. Let's try again. Let's try again. No. Can anyone? No, you can hear. Okay. Oh. Tracy, uh, Leah, is there anything we can do? Um. It may be the public speaker may want to come out and come back in again if that's an option, just to see if there's we could pick up sound from you that way. Yeah, if or if you if you look at your where your uh, mute system is, if you go to um, the microphone selection, are you on microphone array or same the system? Are you have you got any of those? Clearer. That's it. We got you. Sorry, I've been using different um, video call, conference call-ins for work. It seems to have um, tripped my computer. No, it's, that's absolutely fine. So you're happy that you will have five minutes, and when there's one minute remaining, we'll advise you. Are you okay with that? I am, thank you. Okay, that's lovely. If you could please introduce yourself to the committee, and you will have five minutes starting from now. Good morning, Madam Chairman and committee members, and thank you for allowing me to speak at this planning committee. Uh, I'm, I am Wayne Hoban. I am the applicant for um, 10 Pen Road. My property has been owned or have been owned by an elderly gentleman who had fallen into uh, a state of disrepair prior to me purchasing my new home. Heating, electrics and internal plumbing were all renewed, as well as redecoration, refloored and a new kitchen order to make it livable. Significant numbers of overgrown conifers that were causing damage to my neighbour's driveway were also felled and a lot of fencing was renewed around the property. I purchased the property because I saw the potential to make it my home with works done to it to meet modern standards of living. I consulted a qualified and experienced architect who liaised with a planning consultant to draw up plans to meet both my vision of my home and planning legislation. The property is noticeably dug into the decline of Penn Road and it sits below its neighbouring properties. The layout of the property has been designed to have no bedroom windows facing 8 Penn Road or 2 Walters Road and an offset window to the guest bedroom facing Penn Road. The new orangery and kitchen reconfiguration face out over some considerable garden before reaching my curtilage, which is by design and is likely to be the area that I spend most of my time in once it is completed. Plans were then submitted to Broadland Planning Department. Some local concerns were raised on the original plans, leading to productive discussions with the planning officer, agreed concessions and revisions on aspects of the original plan in order to mitigate these concerns, and we are currently on revision E. Having progressed through the planning process in order to achieve an officer recommendation for approval, as detailed to you earlier. I'm looking to breathe new life into an old and tired property, and I'm hopeful that you see fit to provide approval to proceed with these improvements to Broadwood housing stock. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Members of the committee, do you have any questions in relation to the public speaker's presentation? Nothing to move forward on. Okay, lovely, thank you very much. And um, it's, your time is very much appreciated. Thank you. I just have to explain that we do have Councillor Kelly here, but unfortunately, Councillor Kelly didn't think that he was going to be able to attend this morning. So we haven't registered him down to speak. So he's just here to oversee the, the, the um, meeting this morning. So thank you for joining us, Councillor Kelly, and apologies that we, we, we didn't have you down for, for public speaking today. Okay, so um, if Tracy, if you could please unmute the, the committee, and then we can have a discussion in relation to the application. And if you do need to, um, to speak and I don't um, get to see you, if you could put your request through chat and Tracy or Liam will advise me. And we have Councillor um, Officer Lincoln and Officer Rook if you need any further information. Okay, does anybody have any questions that they or any comments they'd like to make? Councillor Adams? Yeah, Chairman, uh, going straight into it, um, I'm going to move refusal because uh, we've heard that the surrounding area is predominantly bungalows and that those that have done lock conversions have done so within the roof. And I'll looking at uh, the uh, DPD and uh, GC4 in particular and design. Uh, and it says that uh, we should pay adequate regard to the environment, character and appearance of the, air, of the area. And the area is predominantly bungalows. And this uh, would certainly not be a bungalow if this is approved. It also says reinforcing local distinctiveness 
through careful consideration of the treatment of space throughout the development, the appearance of new development, the scale of new development and landscaping. So I think it is certainly a, a massive increase on what is there now because the bungalow, I agree, is, is, is quite small, but I still think there's room there for, for it to be, to be enlarged uh, while still keeping it as a bungalow. We've heard from two residents who say it will have an impact on the amenity of their properties. And um, also at um, uh, 2.18 says development proposals should seek to reinforce local distinctiveness through consideration, scale, density, massing, height, landscape, layout, etc, etc, etc. And I don't believe that this actually does meet, meet 2.18. And we go to the MPPF, if I can find it, because there's not too many things here. Um, but the MPPF also talks about uh, uh, development, and it says achieving well-designed places. That's on page 38, number 12. And it says planning policies and decisions should ensure that development will function well and add to the overall quality of the area, not just for the short term, but over the lifetime of the development. I would argue that, in fact, this, uh, this in fact, uh, does not improve the quality of the area. Are visually attractive as a result of good architecture, layout, appropriate and effective landscaping. Again, I don't think this standing on a corner would be particularly visually attractive. Um, and it says it's sympathetic to local character, including the surrounding built environment. And again, we've heard the, all the surrounding uh, and, uh, properties are bungalows. This isn't, and they would take it away from being a bungalow. And it also says establish or maintain a strong sense of place using the arrangements of street spaces, building types and materials to create attractive, welcoming and distinctive places to live, work and visit. And I don't think it meets that one either. So on those policy grounds, Chairman, I am moving refusal of the uh, of the uh, application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Um, okay, we'll move. Let me just grab me just a second. Let's just take this in in order. I have Councillor Karimi Kubalu, please. Um, hi. I'm. I think I'm going to sort of disagree with my dear my dear colleague, Mr. Adams. Um, the treatment of space and local distinctiveness, um, and also with the good architecture. I find the architecture quite appealing, to be honest. And there are a lot of bungalows in Tavern having um, adaptions like this, as you can see on number two, Penn Road. Also, the site is, is lower than number eight, as Matthew said. And if the ridge of the, of the number 10 is going to be the same as number eight, I cannot see how that's and if, if it's detrimental to, to the architecture of the area. That's okay, all I want thank to say. You. Thank, thank you. you. And I've got Councillor Ward. Thank you. Well, I don't see how you can say it doesn't improve the quality of the area. The, the current bungalow look, looks awful, quite honestly. Mm. So it does improve the quality of the area. And I think personally it is visually attractive. It seems to sit quite well in that, in that corner space. So uh, I would like to move officer's recommendation. I would like to second that, please. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Adams didn't get a seconder for his proposal. So we have now got a proposal and a seconder for officer's recommendation. Okay, just bear with us. Uh, Councillor Riley. Thank you. Yeah, uh, I'm actually torn on this. Um, and the reason for that is, is that I think Councillor Adams has made uh, accurate adequate representations in terms of the policies here. And um, I well remember in 2014, um, when Ian Graham was on the planning committee, I think you, re you remember him, Tony, going back that time, um, actually proposed um, that a, a planning application um, <clears throat> be accepted when the officers re were recommended in refusal. On, the, on that day, the ridge height was one meter and 50 centimeters and one meter and 50 mil above the, the existing bungalows in that area. And the officers on that occasion said, you know, this is a strict criteria. It would, uh, when you move the ridge height up, you're changing the character of the bungalows, putting in dormer windows, etc. And that's only just 
50 centimetres above one metre. And I remember the debate went on for quite some time. Um, and at the end of the day, the officer's recommendation um, to refuse was carried. So um, this is why I asked the question earlier on about when this um, other bungalow, um, ha it was agreed for uh, that roof height to be uh, extended up. Um, and I've now know that it actually went under um, officer delegated authority. And at that point in time, no members call it in. It may well be that that one is offset so far back that it's made no difference whatsoever to the local surrounding. And I think somebody's made that point. Um, um, I think the first speaker actually made that point from the residents. And on that basis, if that is the case, then the criteria affecting the rest of the bungalows that are visually uh, within, the, within the setting is material. And in terms of keeping the existing ridge, ridge height, so I'm really torn on this one, and um, I'll listen to other contributions, but based upon previous positioning by Broadland District Council officers, based upon this one, um, mm. and given that the other property has been stated is further back so you wouldn't see it, um, I'll listen, Chair, and I've not made up my mind yet. Thank you. Okay, thank you. I think Councillor Brennan, did you have your hand up, no? Councillor Beadle, <laughs> Councillor Beadle? Thank you, Chair. Uh, I also support the officer recommendation. Uh, some of the objections raised by neighbours, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, actually, are actually not uh, planning reasons which we can take into account. Uh, and uh, I do think this would be an improvement in the area. And, uh, and, and the gentleman is just trying to uh, improve the accommodation for himself and his family. Uh, and I, I support it. I think the officer's got it dead right. And, uh, you know, if uh, that had ordinarily been uh, proposed and seconded, I would do so, Chair. Okay, thank you. Okay, and any further comments from Councillor Porton? Did you have anything? You didn't want to say anything? Anybody else got anything that they'd like to say before we go to the vote on this? I just... Councillor uh, Officer Rook? I think I just wanted to, to clarify and... and... I know Councillor Riley saying he's on the fence on this one. I think the difference in site levels was was a significant factor for the officers in in this case. If this had been a you know a, a flat site with bungalows, rows of bungalows either side of it, and it would stand out like a sore thumb between those, then then we would have negotiated a different form of development. The factors that brought us to our conclusion were that it's on a corner plot as is number two at the other end of Penn Road, and the significant change in, in, in levels so that the increase in the ridge height would not appear as apparent as it would do if it was on a flat site with bungalows either side of it. So that was the factors that we took into account and feel, and that's the reason why we feel that it has regard to the, the policies, uh, policy GC4 that Councillor Adams has referred to um, says that the proposal should pay adequate regard. We feel the design does pay adequate regard. And, you know, local distinctiveness, if, if you take it that far, you, you couldn't make any changes to any property. And, and that's not really what planning is about. Planning is about um, seeing the opportunities as they arise for, for making alterations to properties um, and ensuring that they retain the character and appearance of the area. And given the levels and the and the corner plot in this case, we feel that the proposals achieve that. I just share, um, chair, just just um, picking up on, on what Matthew said. Um, I think that is helpful. Um, my my thoughts were when um, when I read this, um, really, I'd like to have gone down the road because the first thing that came to my mind was the is the road level in terms of the previous positioning around ridge heights of bungalows and what you've just referred to, uh, Matthew, and previous planning decisions by, by the committee as well, uh, but I was unable to actually. So I'm having to try to go on photographs and also what's being said. And in regards to Councillor Adams' points, um, he, he's correct in what he says, but what Matthew is saying also is that, that due regard is being paid to that because you've got the alternate roof heights in terms of the rise and fall of the road, as I understand it, but therefore you'd be within 
the current planning conditions on that, um, that you apply in bungalowed areas in terms of ridge heights. So I think having heard that and my original thoughts around this on, on that criteria, because I'm, I'm about not setting precedents here as well. Um, and uh, I think I would support the application on that basis then. Thank you. Matthew, can I just ask, in, in relation to uh, Mr Thornhill um, advising us that he's worried about the work, whenever the work's being done, is there any conditions that we can put in place that the work should be done at an appropriate time, considering that there are, um, you know, neighbours everywhere around? Uh, is there anything that we can say that would ask that there we... be... Respectful. Sorry, we, we've done that for, for larger scale developments, like larger mm. housing schemes, where you've got 100, 200 houses and, and neighbours around them. For a residential extension, I, I would be reluctant to require that as a condition. It's not a, a condition that we normally impose. Um, I think I would also refer to, you know, obviously we've got the applicant on the, on the call, so he's aware of the, the sensitivities of, of his neighbours and ask for him to take that into account when he's asking for builders to, to do the works. Um, and also environmental health issues around noise disturbance and things like that is, is open to the environmental health department to uh, pursue if necessary. But I would not, I'm not recommending a condition um, because of the scale of the proposals that, that are, are before members today as a domestic householder extension, extensions. Okay, that's lovely, thank you. Um, I do appreciate that, but I just thought that we would, I would just check if there was a possibility. So we would hope that the developer or the owner would uh, take into consideration all the puppies. I'm really sorry, but you can't say anything anymore, Wade. So um, it would be a case of hoping that the things that have been said today will be recognised and, and if, the, if the committee should approve the application. Do we have any further comments before we go to the vote as we have a proposal and second Right. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, it has been proposed by Councillor Ward and seconded by Councillor Karimi Govan Lu that we should, ex we as a committee should agree the officer's recommendation to approve this application subject to conditions as stated on page 37 of your papers. And if I can ask you, Officer Alfredton, please, if you could please proceed to do the roll call for the vote in alphabetical order. Thank you. Councillor Adams. Oh, I know I'm going to lose against. Okay. Councillor Beadle. For. Councillor Brennan. Against. Councillor Folger. For. Councillor Creamy Gouvenlou. For. Councillor Lawn. For. Councillor Moncur. For. Councillor Prutton. Against. Councillor Riley. Four. And Councillor Ward. Four. Okay. Sorry, let me just count that up. Seven. That's seven, four, and three against. So that's carried. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for your time, all members of the public for attending today. It's very much appreciated. That now brings our um, applications for today to a close. And we will now move on to agenda item number six, appeals received and lodged. And if I could just ask Matthew, please, to address them for me. Yes, thank you, Chair. Yeah, there's only one to, to report a decision on an appeal, and this was at Corston, Buxton Road, Corston. The application was an outline application for the erection of a dwelling and associated works. It was a decision made under delegated powers, obviously refused for reasons at the it was outside settlement limit. There was no override in economic, social or environmental benefits. And also the site was considered to have poor connectivity to local services, uh, reliance on the private car, contrary to the uh, council's sustainability objectives. The inspector agreed on both those points and the appeal was dismissed. So that's the okay. only, only one to report today. Okay. Good. And I think that was a good decision in terms of how we're making decisions when you come, come into committee too. So just the the inspect making decisions that are consistent with how we're, we're approaching applications. Okay. Okay, wonderful. Thank you very much. That brings our meeting uh, 